I initially met Ron Olivier in November of 2022. When I traveled to Mississippi with Christ Song founder and director Bobby McGee, we were there to meet with Olivier to discuss the plans for what would later become known as the Freedom Initiative Program. Three months later, we arrive at the front gate at Parchman to put our plans in motion, which included a five-week stay on the prison farm. While Christ Song was teaching the Freedom Initiative Program, I got to know Ron Olivier pretty well. We sat down for an interview in his office and he told me a lot about his life. We talked about his book, 27 Summers, in which he details some of his trials and tribulations, including a 27-year sentence he served at Louisiana State Penitentiary for a crime he committed when he was 16 years old. Olivia has an incredible story. During these five weeks, I slept in a building called the Spiritual Life Center, also referred to as the chapel, and that same building is where the Freedom Initiative program was taught. Also, every morning at 9 a.m., there would be a morning devotion. On this particular morning, Ron Olivier was leading the morning devotion. And I have the honor and privilege of capturing this on video. I think there are some powerful messages in this sermon. So here is Ron Olivier's devotion entitled, Forgiving is the Highest Level of Living. Amen. How are we doing this morning? Fantastic. Praise God. Praise God. I um, just want to have a short devotion this morning. Um, I want to talk about something I think um, that plagues a lot of people. I think it has more casualties than, than COVID, um, um, whether you're a believer or a non-believer. Um, talk about something that really, I believe, the enemy uses to rob us of our blessings, even as Christians. Uh, and so um, let's look at Luke. The sixth chapter. And I'll start reading that. Verse 36. Amen. Listen to this. It says, be ye therefore merciful. And this is the King James Version. As your father also is merciful, judge not. And ye should not be judged, condemn not, and ye should not be condemned. Forgive, and ye should be forgiven. Amen? Amen. And, I, and I love the context of this next verse. That this puts it in context, because um, we use this a lot in dealing with money. It said, but give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, Running over, should men give unto your bosom, for with the same measure ye meet with them, it should be measured again unto you. Amen. And so that puts it in context there. Um, what, he, what he talking about? Giving what? Mercy. Talking about not judging people, not condemning people, and talking about con forgiving people. If you give that. If, I think, I really believe this with all my heart of hearts that the greatest principle in the Bible is the principle of sowing and reaping. Galatians says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, he shall reap. Amen? Amen? So he said, in other words, he's saying, look, don't play with God. If you sow it, you shall reap it. Yeah. Amen? And so here it is, we're talking about forgiveness. Um, we're going to talk about the day. Um, I believe this here, and this is the title of this, this, this short devotion. Forgiveness, say that with me, forgiveness, forgiveness. is the highest level, the highest of, level. Living. of living. Amen. Amen. Come on, if you can learn to forgive, you'll learn to live. Amen. Oh, that's some good news there. Amen. Amen. And so here it is, man, Luke um, talks about if you forgive, you should be forgiven. Anybody remember the Father, the Our Father's Prayer? You ever prayed that? Amen. Come on, come on with me. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come on. Thy will be done. Did, did you hear that? And a lot of people don't even realize what they have prayed. We have prayed to God, 
God, forgive me just as I forgive others. Oh, my God. The same way I forgive others, Lord, forgive me. And so here it is. I, 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 I um, just shared with a brother um, just a couple of weeks ago. I was on debt row, the new, newest guy on debt row. And um, when I went to his cell, he was very, he stood afar off. And I was talking to him, and I went to sharing with him my story. And, you know, at first he couldn't even look me in the eye. He was, he was real downcast and really mumbling when I was talking to him and, and I went to share my story and the more I shared, the closer he got to the balls. And he went, to, he went to weeping and he said, man, he said, I hurt a lot of people. He said, man, I'm, I'm just so sorry. He said, I hurt so many people. And he said this, he said, I, I, I pray that God forgive me, man. I asked him to forgive me. And I looked him in his eyes, I said, man, you are forgiven. And he picked his head up high and his eyes opened wide. And he had this smile. He said, I'm forgiven? I said, yeah, man, God has forgiven you. And he was like, wow. But I told him this. I said, man, um, I said, God has forgiven you. That's, that's a fact. That's, that's not even debatable. He, he has forgiven you. I said, but, I said, but people may never forgive you. And I said, the hardest person to forgive you is you. I say, you have to forgive yourself. Amen? And so here we have this plague in, in Christendom. Um, and, and we're going to look at Matthew 18, and where he talks about um, offense and what we should do with it as Christians. You know, somebody, your brother offend you, go to your brother. Or, but, but, but we go to other people and tell them about the offense. And so... Um, but what I love um, in, in Matthew 18, um, and I believe it's, it's starting at verse 21, when Peter asked Jesus this question, he said, how many times should we forgive? And Jesus' response was what? Seven. Seventy times seven. Now here, this, is, this was a... This, this, this question wasn't Peter really trying to be smart. It, it has a lot of theological undertones there. Um, Peter was really um, was, was, was sharing this in this question because the rabbis had suggested that, or really commanded that, um, you forgive at least three times. So Peter thought he was saying something when he said seven. Should we forgive seven times? And so Jesus said, no, not seven, 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 70 times seven. And that's not 490. That was like an absurd number compared to the three. That we should forgive a person, look, every time. Amen. I can remember this. Um, just, just recently, I had went to Angola to um, speak at a, um, my pastor's um, hearing. He had a um, pardon hearing. And he was my pastor when I was in prison. And my mentor had, had um, really mentored me, discipled me, and, you know, helped me be the man I am today. So I went back to speak on his behalf. And one of the things that, that really you know, kind of caught my attention was the victim's family. You know, they began to speak. And I can remember the lady saying that, man, um, she said, I, you know, I, I know God and I forgive him. 
but he should spend the rest of his life in prison. And so, so but changes everything. But, but interrupts the previous thoughts to establish the, the preceding thought. So everything after but is really what I will, really want to say. Come on, somebody say, I love you, but you know this story is not about love. Amen. This has nothing to do with love. It has to do with everything that comes behind but. And so here it is. It's, it's, it's difficult for me to digest when, when, when a person says they're a Christian and they have been forgiven by God. You know, what if God forgive us like that? Say, I love you, but you have to serve this penalty. The Bible said this here, if a man sin, he should die. Come on, that's, that's the judgment. That's, that's the law. What if he said, I forgive you, but you still have to serve the sinners? Come on, that's not true forgiveness. Come on, I'm so glad he didn't forgive me like that. Amen. Amen. And so I can remember, um, I can remember when I was, I was in a cell. Um, I did 27 years in Angola for a murder that I committed when I was 16 years old. And I can remember in the cell, um, this, this, this long after God had saved me, he had, I'm talking about I had grew in the grace and knowledge, he had matured me, and I wound up being a minister on staff at the church, wind up being a, a missionary at another prison, and even passing the church, and I come back to Angola and end up in the cell for something I didn't do, and here it is, I'm praying in the spell. I, I spent 18 months in a six by nine cell for something I didn't do. And I can remember crying out to God in that cell about freedom. Come on, how many know everybody who in prison want to go home? Amen. Hey, man. Everybody in the hospital want to be well. So I'm praying for freedom. And God showed me my heart. And he showed me my heart was like a picture of a cell block that I had people in. He said, you want me to let you go, but you don't want to let them go. I said, whoa, that's, that's just what I said. Man, wow, I never saw it. He said, you want me to release you, but you don't want to release them. I said, whoa, I said, man, that whatever they did <laughs> is not that important now. I said, man, I got to forgive them. And so I began to release them. I began to release them. And it wasn't long after I believe God changed the law for me. And I'm standing before you here today. He released me. Amen. And so forgiveness is very poor. You never really begin to live until you learn to forgive. Amen? It's, it blocks your, uh, this is what um, unforgiveness does. One of the things, it hinders your relationship with God. And so I'm like, man, my, my relationship is everything to me. That, that's too important. Whatever somebody does, it's not that important. That I can't get the, I need him. I don't know about you, but I need him every day. Yes. And so I'm quick to forgive. And so I can remember um, when I first got born again, man, I, um, I always prayed for the victim's family. At, at court, I can't remember how the judge looked. I can't remember how the, how the DA looked. Neither, neither my lawyer. But the lady whose son I killed, her, her face was vivid. I'm talking about this branded in my mind throughout my year. I can see her right now crying on the stand. 
And so I began to pray for her for years. I prayed for her more than I prayed for anybody in my life. And so as I began to pray for her, as time over time, 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 time and again, time and again, time and again, my heart was drawing even now to her. And the greatest, the greatest thing I wanted to do in life at that moment when I was in prison is to be able to speak to her and just ask her to forgive me. I just wanted this encounter. That, that was more important than me getting out. Amen. And so I got a chance to talk to her um, when I was, I was getting re-sentenced. And man, I, I told her, I said, ma'am, the first words I told her was that I take full responsibility for the murder of your son. And when I said that, it kind of released her because she was expecting the story of some of a, or some type of excuse. And because when I, before I said it, she was like this. But when I said it, she did this and she leaned forward. I said, ma'am, I have absolutely no excuse. I said, it was a very bad decision. Your son didn't deserve that. I just asked that you forgive me. And she said, she said, I forgive you. I'm talking about powerful. And this whole conversation probably lasts about 10, 15 minutes, but it felt like hours. Hardest conversation I ever had to have in my life. And while we're talking, both of us are crying. She said, I forgive you. And she said this here, I believe you deserve a second chance. She told me, she said, what I didn't know was when my son died, that he had a son. She said, I raised him. She said, I wanted to bring him today, too, because he was coming to forgive you, too. I said, I told her this. I said, I said if I get out, I said, I'd like to meet him. This is what she told me. She said, not if you get out. She said, when you get out. Come on, she didn't even have to tell me she was a Christian. I know God had, had to be in work in her life. Amen. Totally forgiven. Although I was handcuffed and shackled while I was talking to her, I felt him fall off. Amen. And I know it did something for her also. How many know that forgiveness is more selfish than anything? And unforgiveness is more self-inflicted than anything. I can remember a book I read by, um, by Dr. Colbert. Um, he wrote a book called, What You Don't Know May Be Killing You. And he talked about negative emotions. He said um, people who come to see him, he said he could tell more about them from their attitude than what's on the chart. And he, and he talked about how unforgiveness and bitterness cause cancer and ulcers. It affects your physical health. He said some people, he, he, he prescribed for them to just laugh. He need to laugh more, smile more. Amen. And so a lot of times we inflict ourselves. I like the way George Myers says, she said, unforgiveness is drinking poison, hoping the person that offended you die. Come on, you're just killing yourself. Come on, I was holding these people in my heart, but I was holding myself in prison. I had the key all the while. Isn't that something? And so your... Your prison might not be physical bars. Your prison could be poverty. Could be your health. Amen. It could be any situation in your life. I just want to share with you today, man, that forgiveness can release that. 
Amen. Amen. And so here we are on this day, and I believe this with all my heart of hearts that I'm here because it, Mark eleven twenty three. Mark eleven twenty three says that verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain be cast into the sea, and not doubt in his heart. But to believe that it should come to pass, he said, he should have whatsoever he said. Amen. Amen. Whosoever could have whatsoever. But you go a couple of verses down, it says this, because this is, this is a part of prayer here. He said, when you stand praying, forgive. Amen. Amen. And so forgiveness is connected to everything in your life that you want to receive from God. Amen? And so when, when we deal with Matthew 18, actually, after Peter asked that question, here it is, you have um, this story Jesus tells about the, the unmerciful servant and how, you know, the king, he had owed the king this debt, and the king was about to throw him in prison, his wife, and his kid to pay that debt. And the Bible says he fell down and worshiped and asked him, look, please have patience on me. I'm going to pay you. When I get it, I'm going to pay you. And, and I love this here. The Bible says, and the king had compassion. Amen. Come on, that's what true forgiveness is rooted in. That's the soul there. Compassion, true love. Come on, if you can't love, you'll never be able to forgive. He said he had compassion and he forgave him the debt. He said, you can go free. Amen. But the same servant, he had a servant that owed him. And he, he threatened to throw him in prison. And so the servant said, he, he told him the same thing he told the king. He said, look, just have mercy on me, man. Look, I'm going to pay you. Just give me patience. I'm going to pay you. And the Bible says this. Listen how violent he was. He said he seized him by the throat and took him and cast him in prison. Come on, that, that's like, man, that's far-fetched. But how many know we're we, we very close to that man every day because God has forgiven us of so much. And so when people offend us, Rub us the wrong way. We become that man. It's so easy to be him. Amen? And so true forgiveness is, is rooted in love. And, and that's how our faith operates. It says faith work it by, by love. The word work it um, in the Greek is energio, which is where we get our English word um, energy from. So faith is energized by love. Amen. Come on, you could have a beautiful car, no, no matter the model and everything look good, but if you don't have any gas in it, come on, if you, if, if you can't get it moving, if it has no energy, it's not going anywhere. And so a lot of times, that's how our faith is, and, and we're expecting and believing God for things, but we holding people captive. And we wondering why we haven't gotten it. Amen? And so I just encourage you, man, if, if, if you're holding anything against anybody, it's not worth it. Amen? Come on, it releases you, it frees you, man. It, it's beautiful ha to have a, a pure heart and just walk among men and women without any, without anything clogging us up. Amen. Come on, you can, you can minister freely. It, it's impactful when you do that. Amen. So forgiving is the highest level of living. You never learn how to live until you truly learn how to forgive. Amen. God bless you.
Amen. Come on, let me pray. Father, we bless your name. I thank you for this moment and time, Lord God, that we can just come before you and, and just hear your word, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you search all of our hearts, Lord God. If there's anything that we're holding against anybody, I pray, Lord God, that you just, just, just put your finger on it, Lord God. And you give us the strength and courage to release them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, anybody who has offended us, Lord. And that we can live a life of true forgiveness, of true love, no matter what someone does to us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, as we go throughout our day. Help us to be mindful of that. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Amen.